All right, I think we're about ready to get started. Um, Thank you everyone for joining. My name is Nora Kern from the Denver Regional Council of Governments. We're going to start with just a quick note about interpretation for this meeting. So I'll invite Liz Torres from the um, CLC to speak to that. Hola, muy buenas tardes. Mi nombre es Liz Torres y hoy estoy aquí con mis colegas, con Ruth y con Jess. Y el día de hoy vamos a estar practicando justicia del lenguaje. Nosotros estamos aquí con la Cooperativa Comunitaria del Lenguaje y les quiero agradecer por su compromiso con la justicia del lenguaje. Y esto significa que todos tenemos derecho a hablar y ser escuchados en el idioma de nuestro corazón. Vamos a interpretar esta reunión del inglés al español simultáneamente y también tendremos la opción de lenguaje en señas. Ya que termine de hablar, vamos a activar la interpretación y en ese momento puede usted elegir su idioma preferido en la barra de herramientas en la parte inferior de su pantalla de Zoom, que se ve como un globito terráqueo. Si usted es bilingüe, no necesita seleccionar uno. Por favor, les recuerdo que hablen a un grupo de conversación para que así pueda brindarles una interpretación uh, precisa de su mensaje. Hi, good afternoon. I am here with the Community Language Co-op and I I'm here with my colleagues, Ruth and Jess, who will be doing ASL language interpretation and I will be doing English to Spanish interpretation simultaneously. So we're going to go ahead and turn it on after I finish saying this. And we, you will see a little globe icon at the bottom of your screen where you can select the language of your choice. If you're bilingual, you do not need to select the language. But I do please ask you to speak at a conversational pace so that we are able to provide an accurate rendition of your message. Uh, we can go ahead and get it started. And let's get it. All right, great, thank you so much. So uh, welcome everyone. I'm gonna, um, we're gonna go ahead and get started with our meeting. Um, my name is Nora Kern. I am a program manager at the Denver Regional Council of Governments and am helping lead this corridor study of South Boulder Road. So Michael, I think we're ready for the next slide. So thank you all so much for joining. Um, I did, we were excited to talk with you all about this study. I wanted to start with just a little bit of background to kind of share where we are, why we're doing this study, who Dr. Cog, the Denver Regional Council of Governments is. Um, after my intro, we're going to then talk a little bit about some of the existing conditions analysis, some of the data we've been collecting um, on the South Boulder Road Corridor study. And then we anticipate the final half hour of this meeting will be um, collecting feedback from you all first through a couple of menti polls. And then we'll have a kind of a question and answer phase at the end. So to, to start, um, this study is focused on South Boulder Road um, from a Broadway in the west in Boulder um, all the way out to 120th in the east. Um, the quarter is um, was selected for a additional study by Dr. Cog uh, through our regional quarter planning program. For those who don't know Dr. Cog or uh, that stands for the Denver Regional Council of Governments. We are the regional planning agency for the nine county area surrounding Denver. We have three primary focuses, regional planning, transportation planning, and then we also uh, run the area agency on aging. So we are interested in South Boulder Road for a number of reasons. 
Um, this corridor was originally identified as a corridor that could be for future, could have future enhanced transit on it in the Northwest Area Mobility Study. Um, after it was kind of identified in that um, transit focused study, it was included in our 2050 Regional Transportation Plan. So this is the, the long range plan for our entire region, mapping out our priorities for the region when it comes to transportation and the projects that we would like to achieve and move forward in order to achieve those priorities and goals. It is included in the Regional Transportation Plan as a high uh, future enhanced transit corridor. And so we wanted to start the planning on this process on this corridor with a high level visioning study. So that's what this corridor study is today. Um, our quarter study is going to take about a year and we're um, about halfway through. We've been starting with some technical analysis. And the important thing to, to keep in mind is this is really a, a high level vision study, a first step study. So we're hoping to achieve two things. First, we're trying to develop a long term vision for the South Boulder Road corridor. Um, to think about what big changes might happen in the long term, in the future, where do we want the corridor to go, what's the purpose of the corridor for the for the three cities and the Boulder County area. Um, but we're also looking to identify any urgent short term, particularly safety um, issues along the corridor so that we can start to address those um, in the near future. For those, uh, most of you I'm guessing already are familiar with the South Boulder Road corridor. Um, it does span to three cities. Um, in the city of Boulder, Louisville, and Lafayette. Um, the whole corridor is, of course, also in Boulder County. Um, Dr. Cog has been working closely with the three cities and the county on this study, and so they're key stakeholders um, for this project. Um, this project originated because of the interest in improving and enhancing transit on the corridor, but we really are taking a high-level, um, broad approach. So we're looking at all modes of travel, people walking, biking, riding the bus, and driving. Um, of particular concern for us on this corridor is the number of crashes. So we do know um, in the 2017 to 21 period, there were 755 crashes, including 25 fatal or serious. So improving the safety and eliminating serious and fatal injuries is a top priority. Um, and then as you can see, we also know there's a lot of folks that live along near this corridor, that work along and near this corridor, and are using this corridor both for um, you know, cross county trips to get from Louisville, Lafayette, and Boulder, and vice versa. But there's also a lot of folks that are using this corridor for shorter trips. So we'll get more into those details here in a second. So with that, um, I am going to pass it over to my colleague um, Nick here in a second. Oh, this is just a quick map of the corridor. Um, the dashed blue line are kind of the the broader area we're looking at, kind of in terms of the influence for the corridor. Um, but you can see we're running, looking at uh, South Boulder Road from Broadway to 120th. Um, I will pass it over to Nick, and I will note is as if you have questions during this presentation, feel free to go ahead and, and toss those into the chat. Um, like I said, after this overview of come, some of the data we've been looking at, we're going to have some questions to understand your priorities for the corridor, your ideas for the corridor, followed by some question and answers. So we'll be able to get to some of those questions at that time. So with that, I will pass it over to Nick, who's from our consulting team, Fair and Piers. Thank you, Nara. Uh, Nick Vanderquack here with Fair and Piers. We're the consultant that's been working with Dr. Cog on this project. Happy to be with you tonight. Uh, before we get into the content of the existing conditions report, we wanted to take a quick poll of who's who's online, who's with us. Um, so we've got a few questions to ask you all. If you want to go to menti.com and enter the code 95593286. You can also uh, use that QR code that will take you directly there. Uh, once you get there, I'm gonna pass it to my colleague, Michael, Michael who's gonna walk through um, some of the, the first questions here and then we'll continue on with the technical presentation. So go ahead and get logged on. Um, we'll give you a, a minute here just to make sure everyone gets connected. Um, again, we do have a couple questions up front here and we're also gonna have a few questions later on. So once you're connected, if you just want to leave that, we'll come back to the Minty poll um, later on during the presentation. So go ahead, Michael, if you want to transition over to the Menti poll, that would be great. Please let me know if you can't see this part of the screen. But I know that people are in. You can see it. Uh, so can I can, <laughs> I'm glad that I can see that people are Starting to answer this first question. First question is, what community do you live in and nearest or are uh, nearest to? 
And this is just to understand who do we have in the room um, to uh, what, what kind of influence are we having? And what kind of interest do we have in the corridor? And I know we have about 40 or 50 participants in the uh, in the call right now. I'm seeing that 25 have responded. So maybe I'll give it just a little bit here. Bit of activity from City of Louisville. Followed by City of Boulder and City of Lafayette, about equal. And you are welcome to join as as we continue with this. Um, please chat to us if, if you are having any issues uh, getting onto this poll. I see a question about the code. It is Alrighty. Um, in the interest of time, we will keep moving along here uh, for with some some other interesting questions, just to get get our uh, minds flowing on this topic here. The uh, next question that we'd like you to answer: What three words describe your current perception of transportation on South Boulder Road? So you should be able to type in on your side of the screen there. And these are any words, any words that come to mind related to transportation as you're traveling along or to or from or crossing. Starting to see some words come on in here. Fast being right, right in the center there, fast and wide. Racetrack, I like that one. <laughs> Good description. Seeing non bicycle friendly, we're saying hilly, cycling, unfriendly, busy, auto dominant. These are all great responses. Thank you all. Give it a few more moments here. School crossings, pedestrian unfriendly, unsustainable, underpass needed at Maine. This is really, really helpful for us to understand what the current perception is. Thank you. And we'll have more opportunities throughout throughout today's conversation to provide more uh, perceptions and, more, and and continue this conversation. I'll go ahead and move on to the next question here. Um, what length are you most regular trips on South Boulder Road? So we're, we are really looking for you know understanding how far are you typically traveling when you're using South Boulder Road? Um, are you using it for regional trips between Boulder, Lafayette, Louisville? Are you traveling to get to destinations that are about three to five miles away? Are you using it or interacting with South Boulder Road to uh, to uh, conduct short trips within your community? Um, or do you not regularly travel on South Boulder Road? We've got quite a bit of responses saying that you're using the road for regional trips between Boulder, Lafayette, and Louisville. 
and about a third of that of those of all current responses short trips within the community. And uh, as as we'll talk about here shortly, this is very reflective of what we're of what we're hearing and what we're seeing that that South Boulder Road is used in a, in a variety of ways. Michael, we have folks indicating that they'd like to check all three. Ah, that's great. Uh, great input. It's hard to choose, huh? All righty. Um, we are going to switch back over to the PowerPoint now, uh, and I'll switch it over to Nick to provide a little bit more uh, detail of, of the analysis and te technical pieces of this project that we've been working on. Thanks, Michael. Really interesting, really good to hear uh, how everyone is using South Boulder Road, and I, I like that comment. I'd like to check all three. Um, when we get back to the slides here, uh, as part of the analysis that we've conducted, we've looked at origins and destinations uh, of trips um, that actual trips that have been taken place on South Boulder Road. Um, and we've done a lot of analysis. I'm just going to have a, a few quick points here on, on, on things that we found. One of the one of the interesting things is um, how people are traveling, whether those trips are entirely within Boulder County um, and then differences on weekdays versus weekends. Uh, what we found is that about 65% on weekends are um, entirely within Boulder County and a little bit more than that on weekdays are in, entirely within Boulder County. And then when you look at uh, trips that start outside of Boulder County uh, and go into Boulder County or the opposite direction, trips that start in Boulder County or go, go external, on weekends about a third of the trips are in that category, those two, two different categories. And it's a little bit less on weekends, a little bit, a little bit more dominant as far as trips just from within Boulder County. And then a small piece of uh, the trips are happening that start and end outside of Boulder County, just a small sliver of people using South Boulder Road for those types of trips. Uh, when we look at how long are those trips is another question that we had asked you is uh, the types of trips that you, you took. And so what we found is it's a, it's a mix of regional trips, short trips and mid-length trips, um, depending upon where you are on the corridor. Um, we, we took at each at several of the main locations within e each of the municipalities and within Boulder County, uh, we took a slice of Boulder South Boulder Road and determined um, how what the length of the trips are um, at those locations. And so places like uh, Table Mesa and US 36, um, there were uh, fewer shorter trips, uh, partially because of those using that that road to get on US 36, likely. Um, and then as you get into uh, Cherryville Road in Boulder County, a large proportion of those trips are, are longer trips um, because of uh, the more regional um, travel that's happening there. And then as you get into McCaslin and, and CO42 and US-287, gradually the trips transition um, to be a little bit shorter, especially um, when you get near US-287. Um, a lot of trips, up to 22% of the trips are under two miles. Um, so a lot more people are using South Boulder Road for those short, shorter trips, but you still have people um, using it for, for longer trips. So it's it's for, used for a variety of purposes. Um, a lot of different, as we look at travel choices and options that are available to people, knowing how far they're traveling really does impact how we look at that. So this is an important thing. We have some additional analysis that we've gone to that we aren't going to speak to tonight that will be included later um, as we document this uh, in our study. Go to the next slide. Uh, one of the pieces from the existing conditions uh, analysis is understanding the demographics of the people uh, living around the corridor and also the people employed around the corridor. So this first map here that we're showing is the population, uh, both the existing population, as well as the forecasted population as we look into the future into 2050. Uh, so you've got the, the, the blue dots, which are the existing and the purple dots, which are the, the future. And what you can see is, it's, uh, it's, there's a lot of growth happening all over the place, but more concentrated growth in some areas. Um, but generally the population centers, uh, Boulder, downtown Boulder, um, Louisville and Lafayette, you can see uh, where, where people live and where people are forecasted to live. Um, and that's an important element as we look into um, how to connect those people with all the trips that they're making. If we go into employment, uh, similar type of map here, with the darker dot indicating that future 2050 forecast of employment growth. 
some of those main pockets of growth are uh, right adjacent to uh, to South Boulder Road, especially in, in Louisville area, um, near downtown, and then into Lafayette as you get on the eastern side of US 287. Um, there's a lot of existing employment there, but also a lot of forecasted employment at that location. So connecting those employees to their residences is a really important element and thinking how South Boulder Road helps that um, function and become better is an important part of this, this study. I, one of the other demographic pieces that we looked at is the Dr. Cog Equity Index, which is really uh, an index of a lot of different factors as we look at equity uh, along the corridor, and I have them listed off to the left side there. Generally, it's a blend of economic indicators, mobility barriers, and race and national origin. Um, Dr. Cog has developed this index to help understand um, um, at the smaller scale uh, what the makeup of the community is and those various factors that come into come into play here. Um, the map is showing, um, you know, based off of what the regional average is, um, how do the areas surrounding South Boulder Road um, score on that metric. Um, so you can see a lot of the South Boulder Road corridor in the middle is in the lowest 25% of the region. But then as you get into uh, Boulder, especially downtown Boulder, and then on the other end of the corridor into Lafayette, um, it, it gears towards, towards the other end. So we have a, a, a large variation of people with different needs um, on South Boulder Road that we need to meet uh, with the mobility choices um, that people uh, need to make with how they travel and get around. Um, so we're looking at all those factors individually as well. Uh, I'm gonna move on to the to some of the, the modal networks um, present on South Boulder Road. I'm starting off with the roadway network itself. Just to recap, uh, the speed limits on South Boulder Road do vary quite a bit from one end to the other with uh, 35 miles an hour in the Boulder section, uh, going up to 45 uh, through Boulder County and then back down uh, to 40 and 35 as you get into Louisville and, and the Lafayette sections with a few different variations. The traffic uh, number of vehicles traveling on the quarter uh, also vary as well with, you know, more uh, varying between uh, about 10 to 20,000 vehicles, um, depending upon where you're at. Um, you look at the South Boulder Road section in Boulder County, um, it's about 10,000 people kind of going through and making those more regional oriented trips. Uh, it was actually a lot less than it was pre-COVID condition, just kind of a side note. Um, the travel demand on this quarter has, has gone down quite a bit um, due to changing travel patterns and behaviors um, with more work, people working from home. Uh, when we look at the transit network, um, what we have shown on this map is um, mostly the dash uh, route, which runs along South Boulder Road, and the ridership of the dash, which is shown in those uh, different symbols at the different bus stops. Um, we do have quite a bit of people using that bus route. Um, and then the other bus, the other bus routes shown here have stops that connect um, to the South Boulder Road dash uh, route and have stops along South Boulder Road. So. As we look at transit, um, existing transit and how people are traveling and how many people are traveling, that's uh, an important element of thinking about the future of um, what types of investments could um, enhance the transit and make it better. Uh, we also looked at transit speeds. Um, so what's shown here is the slowest 10% uh, of buses that are traveling on South Boulder Road. So there's a lot of information on this map, but really, um, what we're seeing is those orange and those red sections are the sections of the road where the bus is generally traveling slower. A lot of times it's correlated with other traffic moving slower, um, but those main locations are um, in Boulder at Broadway and also at Table Mesa in US 36, and then also uh, Main Street, Louisville and South Boulder Road in US 287. Uh, this data is really in informational and useful um, when we look at what are the things that we could do to speed up the bus and what locations need that the most. Um, and so that's how we'll use that in the project moving forward. Uh, as far as bicycle and pedestrian facilities, I've got two slides that show um, the west end of the corridor, which is this slide, and the east end, which we'll see next. Um, so the west end, um, starting in Boulder, uh, this, this schematic here generally shows a bike lane uh, present through the city of Boulder um, with a bikeable shoulder uh, through Boulder County. So at that county line is where the bike lane uh, turns into a shoulder. And generally, the city of Boulder has uh, sidewalks and pedestrian uh, pathways. 
um, on both sides, uh, but generally those on the south side are a little bit uh, better in terms of uh, wider or being more detached from, from the roadway. And then also um, there's a small section of unpaved trail as you um, get towards the eastern end of the city of Boulder where it transitions um, at Boulder County. And there's no sidewalk on the Boulder County section currently. As we look further to the west uh, or further to the east, um, as you get into Louisville, generally there's a continuous bike lane um, through this full stretch here uh, through Louisville and all the way into Lafayette. And there's a mix of detached sidewalks and attached sidewalks, which basically detached sidewalk means there's a median in between travel lane and the sidewalk. Um, so it's a little bit more comfortable. Um, and then some multi-use paths um, present as well. And in particular, the multi-use path, um, the new multi-use path um, in Lafayette between Public Road and 120th that's uh, under construction currently. Uh, we, we also, as part of the project, did a lot of safety analysis. It's a really important element of this study is looking at where are the safety, um, uh, where are the locations where safe, there's a lot of crash activity. Uh, and so we've evaluated uh, crashes um, for the, the, the full corridor and also at all the different intersections along the corridor. And uh, using the last five years of data, uh, we determined where those top intersections of concern, where there's a lot of crashes, where those are, and also um, where are the locations that higher, have higher than expected um, fatal and severe injury crashes. So higher than expected in terms of um, streets that have a similar level of traffic on them, and a similar number of travel lanes. And so those, those top locations are uh, Cherryville, 76th Street, Centennial Drive, and 120th Street. So we're looking at all intersections, but this, this really helps us hone in on specific locations of interest to, to look further at what could be done to decrease crash activity in those locations. Uh, this slide here is showing the estimated right-of-way. Um, so how, how much space is there um, along South Boulder Road um, to potentially make improvements, um, add different features, uh, this is really important for decision making in terms of understanding what types of um, future facilities, whether that's bike lane improvements or a multi-use path or travel lanes or a bus lane. Um, if you don't have available space, it becomes much more difficult to introduce those elements. It's not impossible, it's just impacts adjacent land and costs more. Um, and so uh, this, is, this will help us as we look at documenting what potential improvements um, might fit within these, these locations. So that's a lot. I'm going to stop stop there, pause there. Um, and I do want to pass it back to Michael, um, who's going to go back to the Menti Bowl. So if you all want to open up that, it's that same link if you're still there. And if you are just joining us, please uh, use this code uh, 95593286 or use the QR code and we'll go through a few different questions. Uh, part of what we want to ask you all is, is looking at, uh, you know, what types of improvements you want to see on South Boulder Road and really defining what the vision is for transportation on South Boulder Road. We want to hear from you all. So Michael, if you wanna go ahead and transition to that, that'd be great. Yes, so jumping back into this, let me make this full screen here. This is the question we had already answered. That once again, if you are joining for the first time into this poll that uh, the code is up top um, the based off of what Nick was talking about, we'd love to hear your three words that describe your vision for South Boulder Road. What, you know, taking all of your current perceptions that you shared with us previously into consideration, how would you like to change that? Um, what, what would your vision be instead of the way that it is currently or uh, keeping it consistent with the way that it is currently? Getting some responses coming in here with safe and efficient, convenient. I'll just repeat and or just reiterate, if you are having any troubles, please let us know. Just type it into the chat. We will be happy to help you. Got protected bike lanes, safe and multimodal as those top three big words that are on here. But we also have uh, faster and slower and uh, transit and calm. 
many other words that I'm not catching since it's constantly moving, but really great to, to see all of your responses here. I'll give it just a few more moments. And these are helpful for us to start framing our, our you know, our, our vision here for South Boulder Road and, and how we design it to be able to uh, accommodate this vision here. Alrighty, I'll go ahead and, oh, and I'll just point out small at grade trains came up as a big one too, which means that's coming up more. All right, I will go ahead and move on to the next question here. Um, we wanted to just focus in on particular sections to get ourselves to uh, talk about how, the, the various uh, differences that are occurring on this uh, corridor. So when we're talking about the City of Boulder segment, so between Broadway and, and Cherryvale Road, what do you like and what could be improved? I believe this is an open-ended response, so you should have a little bit more space, uh, a little bit more characters to be able to provide a response. And while we're waiting here, I just want to reiterate, we're going to have questions on the other segments as well. Uh, yep. We wanted to recognize the difference in the length of this corridor and the diversity and the differences in roadway and what one section might need, the other section might not. So that's why we broke it up that way. Thanks, Nick. Some responses are coming in here. And I also wanted to remind everybody while these are coming in, uh, I think it was mentioned up front and we'll mention it at the end, but we do have on the website, we do have a map where, where you can drop pins on the map and you can leave very specific feedback. Um, a lot of this that is coming in here is really interesting and useful and we could talk to that tonight, uh, but we also want to hear from you on the website with that same information and additional um, ideas that you might have. That's really helpful for us as we look into the specifics of the individual sections. Let me just uh, test something out here. Okay, uh, I just wanted to make sure I was being, I was able to see the full response if there was anything else on here. Uh, quite a few responses here. Uh, Nick and, and team, do you have a preference if we spend a couple of minutes kind of reading through these and, and talking through these, um, or did we want to collect responses and then come back to it? If we can come back to this, well, let's, let's hit a couple of them here, um, and then I think we can come back to it during Q and A as well. Um, we're sure. gonna have, we're gonna have a moderated Q and A um, where you can type your your questions in the Zoom chat uh, or in the Zoom Q and A where we'll go through those as well. So if you want to put some questions there, if we don't get to what's on the screen here, we will try to capture that tonight there as well. And also everything we hear here, we're capturing even if we don't verbally mention it in the meeting. Great to see all the all the feedback here, though. Um, looks like we've got some some bus speeds, better bus speeds, uh, faster traffic, synchronized signals, um, some some comments about US thirty six flyover. Um, some, some people don't have issues with that area, uh, rural feel and views, and, uh, better crossings. So we got looks like we've got a lot of really good feedback here um, that we can we could talk to as we kind of kind of go through so michael i'd say let's uh let's let's keep it moving uh through these sure. few questions here and then we can we can uh, come back to them if we want to great uh moving on to the next segment of our study area and the corridor looking at the boulder county segment which is between cherryvale road and mccaslin uh what same question what do you like about it what could be improved Better, better signal timing at Cherryville at 76. Yay, cows. You like the current speed limit. It's fast and convenient, but there's uh, minimal 
stoplights. Some, co some comments related to multimodal decisions, you know, needing a separated bike or multi-use path, multi-use path that's protected, saying that it's scary for bikes. But also balancing this with, you know, those hills are dangerous, especially speeders going through red lights and the, ru the rural feeling of it being wonderful. To, it's it, this is why we do these activities is to get a variety of voices in in here and to be able to come up with a common vision. So we appreciate all your responses here. Keep scrolling. Wide shoulders are good, but tend to collect debris. Don't have a dedicated bus line like Arapaho. Desire to install red light cameras. Driving a lot, a lot of uh, conversation here about about speeding and, and and the impact of signals. Give it just another moment for for people to respond. Less light pollution. Looks like two uh, comments about Macintosh Academy and having a safer crossing. Thank you all for, for these responses. I'm gonna go ahead and keep on moving to the next segment, which is our Louisville segment. Uh, so for the city of Louisville segment, which is between McCaslin and Cimarron, what do you like? What could be improved? Same question. Recognizing that each of these, is, as we've already seen with the city of Boulder section and with the Boulder County section, that there's there's different perception, there's a different you know way of traveling through there, different existing conditions, different visions for the future. Comment about keeping it as the existing four lanes. Desperately needing more underpasses. Some common comments about traffic signal timing and how that's impacting people running red lights and speeding as well. Uh, this uh, comment about a lot of opportunity to get going too fast on a big downhill. Michael, we have a question from Linda. Where is Cimarron? Uh, just east of Colorado 42 or Courtesy Road. So it's the it's the boundary of Louisville. Please correct me if if I'm wrong, but I think my my map in my head says that that's correct. <laughs> the house can be scary. Longer turn lanes. The road should be narrowed through communities like Louisville and Lafayette to make it easier to uh, access assets on both sides and slow traffic. Love the option for pedestrians and cyclists off the road. Bike lane gets very narrow near high speed vehicles and turning vehicles. A quiet zone. Really like the digital speed limit sign that says your speed can kill. Some great responses coming in. Speed does kill. Just gonna expand this. Um, oh, maybe I've not killed someone yet. Dot, dot, dot. All righty. Uh, and moving on to the last segment in the polling, we'll we'll have an opportunity to talk about this as as a larger group here in a second. 
Um, but for the city of Lafayette segment, so this is the, the, the most, the easternmost side of our corridor between Cimarron or just past uh, Colorado 42 or Courtesy Road, um, all the way over to 120th Street um, at the terminus of South Boulder Road. What do you like? What could be improved? Construction is brutal. When will it be done? I don't know if that's a uh, uh, response. I don't know that answer, um, but somebody I'm sure on this call does. Some more comments about traffic lights and, and timing those street lights better and making them more synchronized. Comment about uh, crossings for schools, especially with how many schools are in the area. Some more comments about crossings in particular to 287. Bike lane is difficult to use in this area near the commercial area. It's very narrow with very high speed of traffic. Another comment about the, the current construction going on over here and, and its impact on mobility throughout that section of the corridor. And just talking about the land uses there just being super commercial uh, right along the, the corridor. So being able to accommodate that for people to access poorly paved. Easy access to business or businesses. Michael, thank you for going through those questions. I think that's the last question, right? Yep. Uh, I did want to make sure we have enough time for for Q and A. Um, so thanks, Nick, and thank you everyone for your responses. Those are really really good. Um, glad to hear from you all. Um, if we can go back to the slide deck, Michael. Um, I think we had one more slide, um, and then we'll we'll open up for for Q and A. Um, the last the last slide is just talking to the schedule of the project and where we're at and what to expect next. I um, wanted to recap that. Um, just to say it again, our online survey is open through February 12th. Uh, we do want to hear from everybody on this call and, and your friends and anyone else that's interested in South Boulder Road. Um, we're using all of those comments. Um, so go there and drop a pin um, or, or take the survey. Uh, we are developing and refining the project vision um, that's in progress and is taking into account all that we hear tonight and what we found in the analysis and all of that. Um, our next public meeting will be in the spring to talk through some of the concepts that are being developed and get some feedback and kind of go over some of those preliminary recommendations and, and turning those into recommendations with that full project development plan with recommendations uh, concluding in the early summer. Uh, in the near term, we do have this weekend um, on Saturday, we do have two pop-up community events um, that where we'll, the project team will be available to talk with you and, and talk more about the project if you're interested. Uh, the first one uh, in the morning will be at the Louisville Recreation Center from 9.30 to 11.30. And then in the afternoon, we'll be at the East Boulder Community Center. So I hope to see a lot of you out there. Um, and then we hope to also talk with others who aren't haven't heard of this project just to get more feedback and thoughts on the project. Um, again, um, all of this information is on the project website, which is listed below. Um, we'd love you to take take a look at that and uh, um, leave some feedback. Uh, so with that, I do want to transition to Q&A. If we go one more slide, we've got contact information, my email address and Nora's email address is there. Um, and then we also feel free to reach out on the website I'm going to pass it over to uh, the other Nora, Nora Neurider, um, who's going to moderate our Q and A. Um, so go ahead, Nora, if you want to start asking us some questions from what you've heard in the chat, and give some instructions for folks. Sure, I have I have a few questions. Although I think people were so busy responding to Menti that um, that you've got some really really rich responses in in Menti, and we have a few questions here. While you, Nick, were going over. Um, the, your findings on the corridor. 
uh, a question came in from Laura, regularity of travel depends on the week, time of year, et cetera. Can you explain how you collect data with regards to speed and volume and PEDS and bikes and auto and transit? Yeah, yeah. So there's a lot of different pieces that come into play with data. Uh, one of the big pieces that uh, is really helpful as we look at where people are traveling and the types of trips people are making, the link slide that I had and the, the slide that showed uh, showed that is it's called streetlight data and it's collected using cell phone uh, data. And so it tracks where people are starting their trips, where they're going, and also kind of breaks down um, determining how people are traveling, if that's in a car or um, it knows when people are moving slower, they're walking or biking or via transit. Um, and so that's that was really helpful in determining um, what the travel market is and in terms of, of that piece. Um, from a from a other data perspective, uh, we've utilized uh, 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 there's some bike data. Um, Strava is a, is a recreational bike data tool where we have gathered some some data to look at at least recreational that people are tracking their rides, where they're riding. Um, and where, where are those trips taking place? Um, and then we've got, uh, from a travel uh, traffic perspective, um, there are our counts, field, field counts that um, have been collected over the years and recently by uh, the, the agencies uh, that are involved in this project. And so we've reviewed those and used those to help validate and look to what the traffic is. And how, in some cases, how fast people are moving um, and other things like that. So lots of data. Yeah. <laughs> uh, thanks, Nick. Actually, in that in that data space, M Mark asks. Um, my observation is that dash buses have three or four people on them and are often empty. Can you tell us what the hourly averages are for transit use? What we have is daily information. Um, so RTD uh, tracks tracks that using automated uh, passenger counters on the buses, um, and those reports are reported back on the daily. When you get to the finer um, hourly level, it's it it it's not as accurate to think about it that that way. But RTD also um, has metrics that look at um, how full the buses are, you know, as people get on and off, and calculations about that. So some buses are are more used than others, especially uh, during uh, peak commuting times um, or other times when more people are traveling. Um, the schedule is uh, organized uh, and reevaluated by RTD on, on a regular schedule um, to accommodate uh, the needs and the, the various travel patterns as, as they're identified and changing. And if someone from RTD is on that, wants to talk to that, I'm not sure if we have that ability or who's on from RTD, but um, um, we can get to that if we uh, are able to here. Um, still in the data space, David asks, are we comfortable that the traffic counts aren't biased too low because they were taken during COVID? Yeah, so I mentioned that we have the field collected counts, um, which we have pre-COVID counts and we have some post-COVID counts. We also have using that data source streetlight data um, they're not actual field counts, but they are based off of how many people are traveling. And there's a, there's a formula that, that's used to calculate um, annual daily traffic um, or average daily traffic ADT, um, which is what, what uh, we're reporting back here. And that that is, we can look at the same place in 2019 and 2023 and look at how that's changed. And so the numbers that I, sh I showed on, this, on the slide there, those were post COVID, those are 2022 counts, I believe from, from a mix of those different sources. Thanks, Nick. Um, David asks, and this may be a question for Nora or, or Nick, um, are landowners adjacent to South Boulder Road being consulted? to see whether the right of way can be expanded for things like separated multi-use paths. I'm happy to, to take that one if you want, Nick. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think the answer is we're still um, too probably too early in the process. We haven't even, um, we're really just kind of establishing a vision to figure out what types of changes might be needed, if any of those would look at widening 
Um, so I think the short answer is we, we haven't yet because we're not sure kind of what direction we'll be going. Um, as Nick showed, um, a number of the sections, particularly in Boulder County, do currently have a pretty wide right of way, which leaves us a, a good bit of room to kind of operate and consider um, what else might be needed in, in the road right of way. Um, but I think certainly if a recommendation out of this project was to do any sort of widening or um, have any projects that were potentially impacting um, property owners, that would certainly be kind of a first step before advancing those projects is making sure we talk, talk with those folks. Um, so I think for now, we're not sure if that'll be needed, but would certainly be kind of in a, in a future project if, if necessary. And I would just follow up that the, the space that's there we're determining is a very uh, planning level estimate based off of parcel data. When, we, when projects get further along into the design phase, um, we would actually have a, a survey that would take place. This is not happening as part of this visioning project, but things we're recommending that get carried forward uh, in future projects would look into that further to determine the exact boundary and if something fits or not. And so that would that would all take place later later in those phases. So uh, related uh, and and forgive me if this has been answered, but Dr. Uh, Stephanie asked, Dr. Cog has been talking about corridor planning as it relates to land use. Is that type of conceptual corridor planning part of this project? Oh, Stephanie, that's a very a good question. Um, I think, you know, this part is mostly focused on the transportation system, but we know that the transportation system and land use and, you know, housing and, and all those sorts of questions are really intri intricately linked. So I would say for the purpose of this quarter study, we are mostly focused on kind of the transportation elements. Um, keeping in mind, of course, as Nick discussed in the presentation, where we kind of currently anticipate future growth um, might be happening, both for jobs and for, for housing and, and um, residents. Um, so I think, you know, of course, the, the growth of the corridor is important from a land use perspective in terms of how that impacts, you know, number of cars, number of people walking, biking, potential future transit growth. Um, in terms of um, more broadly with land use, you know, a, our big focus is kind of helping um, looking at housing, but that's really at the regional and sub-regional level at this moment. Um, so we don't have any specific projects around corridor land use here. Um, and a lot of the land use questions really um, are still, you know, ultimately determined by the local government. So we, for the most part, defer when we get into the nitty gritty um, to uh, Boulder, Boulder County, Louisville, and Lafayette. So they would be leading those kind of more, more detailed conversations. So I think we have a car related question from um, Stephanie. How are you considering the three prong flow from Highway 7 to South Boulder Road at 120th? The design for North to Arapahoe seems a slower flow plan. Uh, we need flow of commuting to Boulder considered as part of this study. I don't know if someone from Boulder County is on that's able to speak to that. Um, I can mention some things, but um, is is Landon or Alex on that would be able to address that? They um, are. <laughs> I think we'd have to unmute them. I could <laughs> I can ask and see if they want to. I think Jean is also here. Oh, great. Uh, I guess while well, that's happening, that those are really important things to consider at the at the larger level and are being considered because uh, there's a lot of corridor studies. There's one going on on, on CO7 on Arapaho now, and there's this, which is further along in the design process. And there's this study, um, and I know it's a priority for Boulder County to understand um, how those all work together as well. And there's some other projects that are happening to understand those regional connections, um, especially, uh, you know, to and from the city of Boulder and how those all interrelate with each other. So that, that effort is going on currently. And it looks like Jean did unmute, so I don't know if you or Landon have anything to add. Yeah, thank you, Nora. This is Jean. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yeah, I think that's a that's an excellent question, right? Because we have you know several commuter corridors into and out of Boulder and between um, cities to the east. Um, South Boulder Road being an important one for us, as well as um, as well as Arapaho. Um, and we look at them collectively. So as we look at like the travel demand into and out of the city, we know that it's higher on Arapaho, less so on South Boulder Road. So we look at that context and how 
that might influence the design and the types of service that we provide um, into and out of the city. So when you think about those two projects in particular, those east east west corridors, um, the Arapaho corridor, or CO7, as it's referred to, as it goes out to I-25, is a little bit more advanced in terms of its design, um, planning and design for the corridor, and actually going out and trying to find funding to make improvements. Um, whereas this corridor is a little further behind. So we're just in the process of determining what the vision is so that we can develop concept plans and implementation items so that we can start to look for funding to make these improvements. I hope that's helpful. And this is Landon Hilliard with Boulder County. I'm a transportation planner. Uh, Nick and Jean have covered it in, in, in fundamentally. I would only add that Boulder County has a great interest in thinking about commuters, knowing that many people work in a different place than they live. And so the key corridors, including South Boulder Road and Baseline and Arapahoe Road, Colorado 7, are uh, considered as main conduits into the city and out of the city within Boulder County. So this is all to say that we're thinking regionally and trying to develop these corridors uh, to be appropriate for uh, multimodal use. Thanks, Landon. Um, we've talked about growth and we've talked about employment on the corridor. Um, are the impacts and the future use for an aging population being considered as part of the study model? I will say uh, yes. Um, we're, we're looking at existing uh, ages, uh, young people and older people that have different uh, travel needs um, and understanding how that's changing over time is important to even more important to continually address um, as the aging population is growing how do we accommodate people who can't drive and who can't uh, uh, need to make other choices and how do we make the right choices available to them so they can still travel to where they need to go? So definitely, yes. We have um, some transit questions. Are there any plans to have areas to park so more people can use the bus and improving bus stops? I will say that uh, that's a comment we want to hear if you have uh, specific locations where you think that would be a good thing. Um, as of currently, I don't think we have any uh, concepts that are looking at new park and rides, but that is something that could be considered as part of this project to, to advance as part of the visioning effort. This may be a question for Nora um, uh, regarding cost. Uh, let's say that the recommendations that come out of Dr. Cog is cost prohibitive. Um, how will you approach funding? Yes, that's always a great question. Um, I will say first, you know, we are working closely with our um, partners at Boulder, um, City of Boulder, County of Boulder, um, Louisville and Lafayette to make sure we're kind of right sizing the recommendations where we were working kind of in lockstep with them and, and certainly don't want to have any recommendations that um, don't make sense in terms of scale, cost or kind of ultimate outcome for, for the local governments. Um, we are hoping that the, the plan will look at, you know, potential funding sources. There are a number of, um, of course, local funding, but also regional, statewide and federal funding opportunities. Um, that are coming down the pike. So one of the reasons we wanted to, to do this study now is um, kind of to prepare so that when those funding opportunities come up, whether it's funding through Dr. Cog's Transportation Improvement Program, through federal opportunities or through state programs, that we're kind of ready to go. Um, so that'll be a big consideration, um, you know, as we kind of figure out what types of things we recommend um, and certainly kind of how we fund these will be a big question that we kind of um, start to answer in our implementation plan. Um, we probably won't get all the way. And so we know, for example, Boulder, Boulder County is already looking at uh, somewhat of a phase two to take some of the pieces, potentially the transit pieces of the study kind of to a next level. Um, and so we kind of, look, we look forward to working with them and, and with others um, to figure out for the recommendations, what are the highest priority? What are the funding options? And how as a region can we kind of work together to, to move forward some of the um, recommendations? Uh, we do have a question about considering the viability of South Boulder Road continuing west of 120th. It must mean east. 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 Um, 
Well, I can, I'll maybe start and if Nick wants to add anything, I think, um, you know, in some, some long range plans that was, there was a line on a map is that potential. Um, it hasn't come up a lot in our conversation so far. Um, and I know there has been some, some development and other activity on the Eastern end that would make it more challenging than it might've been 10 or 20 years ago. Um, so yeah, I think it's an interesting idea. We can definitely look at it. Hasn't been a big focus that I'm aware of, but it's an interesting idea. I don't know if Nick, if you have anything to add. I, I don't have anything else uh, kind of similar to what you said. I, I, I think that it's, there's some opportunities that have, have closed because of some land use decisions. Um, you know, once something's built, it makes it harder to put a road through there. Um, so this study is not actively looking at that as a, as something, but it's it's something that could be left open ended for as a recommendation to consider that in the future if it become comes to the uh, to the front here, especially uh, as Lafayette considers their planning and what they're doing. Uh, we're seeing comments about a desire to see crosswalk buttons uh, where uh, someone on a bike can push it, and the light will read a bike. Um, there are a series of comments about wanting flashing lights on all ped crossings. What's the best way for people to submit those so that they're that they're listed among the responses to the study? I would say again, uh, if you can go to the the website, um, you can find the. There's a map there. It should, it's really easy to find on the website, and we have a number of different categories of of comments that you can drop on the map. And one of those is is bike related issue or or opportunities. I think it's labeled. And if you drop a comment at a specific location, we'll definitely take a look at that and consider that as part of our recommendations. And I'll add if there are really specific detailed things, we can certainly also pass those along to the local jurisdiction if, if it's something that needs to be addressed right away. But feel free to pass those along to us or directly through the jurisdictions if it's an urgent issue. So I think our, our questions have slowed and we have covered these um, as many as I think have been submitted to the chat. I don't know if you want to go back to Menti, or if we're at time, we've spent an hour with folks, uh, which we really appreciate. Um, but the the questions that have been put in the chat, hopefully we've answered them as fully as we possibly can. We will create an FAQ based on these questions so that they'll appear on the website uh, as well for, for folks who couldn't make it tonight. But I don't know if you if yeah. you want to spend another five, 10 minutes on the Menti poll or if we have spent our 60 minutes together. I, I think we can uh, we can conclude the kind of general Q&A and the project team is is happy to stay on if if uh, folks want to stay on and continuing to ask questions or want to look at some of that polling. We can if you want to put that in the chat, if there's something specific, a section you want to look at, we're happy to bring that up. Um, or answer additional questions. But yeah, I definitely want to thank everyone for joining tonight. It's uh, great sharing this project with you all. Carla does ask, will there be a follow-up email? Um, and yes, we hope to continue communicating with you as fully as we possibly can. Uh, remember to check the website um, and then our partner municipalities will continue to communicate with you on the subject of this study as well. Yeah, thank, thank you, everyone. Really appreciate the thoughtfulness um, and the comments. We're, we're really excited both to kind of think of the long term and, and some of the shorter term needs on this corridor. So if you have any questions, like Nick said, feel free to reach out or feel free to stop by. I think um, I will be at both the pop ups this weekend along with several of our um, team members. So would love to if you want to have a longer conversation, stop by there or just uh, send us an email. So hope everyone has a great night. Yeah, thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone.